And then when I won the first date, I was like, oh, <laughs> yes, you know, I, I knew I could do it, but to do it the first date, the first opportunity was quite special. G'day legends and welcome back to the Press Room Podcast presented by Zwift, episode 66. And wow, I'm so excited for this episode. Our guest today is Charlotte Cool from Team DSM. Now, let me just paint the picture for you, okay? In the women's professional peloton, in the last two years, nobody has been able to touch Lorena Webbis, who now races for SD Works. No one has been able to touch her in any sprint stage. In fact, she wins by like six or seven lengths. Kind of like a peak Mike Cavendish back in the day, if you've ever seen the videos of him winning. It's just unbelievable. She is so fast. Now, Lorena Webbis used to race at Team DSM last year, and part of her lead-out train was Charlotte Cool, and she was, in fact, the last person who was dropping the dropping Webbis off before she would launch for the sprint. And we always, I guess, the cycling media often wondered how fast would Cool be if she was the leader? Well, now we have the answer. She is now the sprint leader at Team DSM, and we got to see Webbis and Cool go head-to-head at the start of this year at the UAE Tour. And Cool, well, she delivered not once, but twice able to beat Webbis, and not just beat her by a hair or a time width. She actually beat her by a bike length on both occasions. Now, Webbis did get one back on her and smoked her by a couple of lengths as well, but it's clear as day that Charlotte Cool is the one that can challenge Lorena Webbis, and it's just setting up an absolutely juicy battle at the Tour de France Femmes. I cannot wait for that, and that is something we talk about in this podcast. We chat about with Charlotte Cool how did she transition from lead out to sprint leader, and what was that like? Um, We also talk about what did she learn from leading out and being part of the train that she's now taken with her as the sprint leader. We also talk about whether or not when Webbis and Cool were both at DSM, did Charlotte think she could beat Lorena when they're on the same team? That's an interesting question, and it's one that takes an interesting answer. And we also just chat about what skills and what you need to be a top-level sprinter, as well as a host of other things, because Charlotte is an absolute legend, and she froths pro cycling, like seriously, probably more than I do. She watches all the races, men's, women's, really, really loves it, and it was so cool to chat with her, and I think you guys are gonna love this episode. But guys, I have to say, big shout out, right? Big shout out to Zwift, the title sponsor of the podcast. They're sponsoring the the Paris-Roubaix Femmes this Sunday. This is my favorite weekend in cycling Sunday. I can't wait. Paris-Roubaix, best racing ever. Um, So if you haven't tried Zwift, make sure you get on and try the seven-day trial. Also, shout out to Smith Optics, the cycling sunglass uh, sponsor for the podcast, the XCs, okay? I talked about them last week. The XCs, guys, you must just get on them. They are an amazing sort of a blur between the casual and the sport sunglass. They're really, really cool. Retro vibes as well, some really neat colorways. And also, Attacker, guys. CR-thepressroom for 15% off, especially in Australia. We're starting to switch seasons now, getting into winter. So uh, make sure you get into their winter gear. I'll just give you a little tip, right? The long finger gloves. Make sure you get on those long finger gloves for Attacker. They and they are an elite product. Also, a little bit of housekeeping, guys. This episode is the last one for a little while. This will be the end of the season or this sort of summer autumn block. And I'll have a little bit of a break, recharge, and start building for the next block of episodes that will probably drop around about the Giro time or after the Giro. I will have a special Giro episode though and also a special gravel race ep in May for seven gravel race. And that will likely feature maybe Tiff Cromwell and Nicholas Roach uh, who are coming over to race. But yes, a little bit of a break for me. So I hope you've listened to every episode. If you haven't already, make sure you do. But uh, legends, this is it. It's time to get stuck into an absolute cracker of an episode. This is Charlotte Gould from Team DSM. And I'll see you on the other side. So 
So, uh, have you just had, you're just getting over Corona or COVID? Yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, that sucks when you get that mid-season, hey? Yeah, it was absolutely, um, yeah, sad. Especially I started so good and I had such a high level. Um, and then getting COVID um, was f- quite frustrating. But, um, yeah, it is what it is. Mm. When you when you have to be uh, at home and you're forced, yeah, you have to have some forced rest, what did you find yourself doing? Did you try and keep yourself busy with something while you're at home? Um, I have to say during the COVID, I was quite sick. So I, um, yeah, I had not much time to do other things than lay in my bed and uh, recovery. Uh, but I tried to do, uh, of course, uh, watch the races. And um, I mean, there were a lot of races, like men's races and women's races. So I just like to watch that. And then... Um, I try to find some good Netflix series or things to watch. Um, so, yeah. Okay. That did, actually. did you find anything good to watch? Uh, yeah, the Formula One uh, new episode was on. Oh, so, that was good. Good timing. Drive to survive. <laughs> yeah, Drive to survive. So, um, the, okay. and I have to say, this last season was uh, quite exciting, more exciting than the other season. So, um, yeah, it was nice. I agree. I really, um, uh, I really started to like Alonso after the third season. Yeah, true. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And now he's got a, a decent car. It's quite cool. Yeah, indeed, indeed, indeed. Yeah. Well, um, well that's really interesting. That's, that's that's cool. I'm looking forward to the cycling one. That should be coming out soon too. Like oh yeah, July. yeah. It's so sad they don't did the moments, but I'm so excited for the. Yeah, I think it will be exciting. I hope it ha- it has the same explosion as it had for Formula One. So, um, yeah, that will be good. Yeah, I'm sure if the this one goes well, they'll do a women's ones next because uh, that's where yeah. so much growth is in the sport. Yeah, yeah. Well, uh, Charlotte, you're a very exciting rider. I think, um, especially now that uh, you're say the sprint leader in your team. And I wanted to know what is it like? Um, what was it like now being, you know, the lead sprinter in your team now that Lorena's uh, at SD Works? How did how did it feel at the start of the season? Um, yeah, really exciting, exciting. Of course, um, last year was different being lead out for Lorena, and we won a lot of races, which was also a really nice experience. And um, yeah, this winter I knew uh, this year will be more my year with sprinting myself. Um, so I worked really hard this winter. Um, and then the first goal was UAE, especially with such nice bench sprinters. And also so nice that we we as women could finally do this race because yeah. for sprinters, of course, it's a dream to race there. Yeah. Um, and then when I won the first date, I was like, oh... <laughs> So, yes, you know, I, I knew I could do it, but to do it the first stage, the first opportunity was quite special. Um, and then ending it the way we did uh, with the last stage, yeah, mm. just a dream, yeah. It's, uh, and you didn't just beat, you didn't just win by a couple of, you know, set, you, know you won by quite comprehensive for both of them. It was pretty impressive uh, to see. Yeah. And when when uh, you guys were teammates, you and Lorena Webber last year when you were teammates, did you think that if you were sprinting against each other that you could beat her last year? Like, did you think you were um, fun or that you could compete last year? Or was it only really this year that you thought, oh, yeah, I can actually beat her, I'm faster? Uh, no, I think I always had in my mind that in the future I will always be possible maybe to beat her. Um that's just my self belief, mm, yeah. um, and then um, in training we did also quite often some sprints next to each other, and it was already always quite close. And sometimes she won, sometimes I won. Um, but I think, yeah, last year how uh, strong she was, it was quite normal um, that she did all the sprints. Yeah. Uh, and I have to say, for me, it was also quite clear uh, I signed my contract and it was like you will be a lead out and um, there will not many opportunities for yourself 
but I just knew on that moment uh, it will be a year to invest to become better and stronger in this amazing team and um, so my, my mindset was also t- totally different as I knew um, yeah it will be a good year to improve myself and to learn a lot um, so yeah I think that was um, especially the mindset Mm. It's always important, I guess, for sprinters to have um, uh, a self-confidence. It often seems yeah. that that comes and goes as well. At least from what I've True. seen, uh, you know, on the male on the male side, only very rarely do sprinters go you know, win for prolonged periods. You know, sometimes they have True. yeah, like down periods, and then they come back. Um, so that's really cool to hear. Did you when you were working with uh, Lorena Lorena last year? Did you? Um, like, was there anything that she would do during a race preparing or um, post-race that you have taken, I guess, experience from, you know, for you this year? Um, yeah, of course. I think um, you see everything so close. Um, and I think especially the things um, like uh, not giving up. So I think one thing I really learned is that uh, especially if you look to women's tour, there were some states that were quite challenged and she just never gave up. And it resulted in, I think, two wins that were quite unexpected um, because she just kept on going and, um, yeah, took us all with her. Like, I think I can make it over the climbs and otherwise we chase and maybe we can come, still come back. So I think I really learned about this part to never give up and uh, always keep on challenging. Um but for the rest, I need to say, um, yeah, I think there's not really something I think expect for that, that I was like, ooh, that I can take over. I am always looking really to myself, I have to say. Mm, okay. That's really cool. It's a great, It's I think it's a really good um, storyline for the women's cycling because, um no one's really been able to compete with the Reno in a proper sprint stage, like maybe on a harder classic stage, you know, uh, Balsamo, she might, you know, she's been able to get her once or twice, but in a dead sprint, no one's really near her. So now that there's, we have you have your own run at it and you've proven that you can beat her not once but twice. It just makes it such a cool, um, well, it just makes it a, a great narrative. Like, like on Drive to Survive, it just makes it a really cool storyline yeah. for the sport, right? And it's something that I'm really looking forward to for the, say, if you're both at the Tour de France, which I'm sure is, is likely, that would be an epic um, battle. Yeah, yeah, true. No, I think it's for for sure for women cycling way better. I think last year it was for our part really nice that we dominated, yeah. dominated the sprint so well. But, yeah, of course, it's way more exciting to – look to a bunch print and be like oh who's gonna win today yeah. uh that of course makes it more exciting so i think um yeah for sure it's good for the sport um and i hope uh people who like to see a lot of bunch prints now <laughs> yeah that's right yeah so um from your time as working as a in the lead out role what have you taken um like is any i don't think like oh that's what i was gonna ask yes Apart from obviously the power of you know that you need to sprint, the finishing kick, what are some of the other things you need to be good at um, as a sprinter to to be successful? Um, yeah, I think what we already said, like the confidence, I think you really need to believe in yourself um, because you make decisions in split seconds and not even maybe you're doing them on purpose, but if you have the confidence, you just do it. And if you don't have the confidence, you maybe break on the wrong moments Mm -hmm. Um, so I think for sure confidence um, yeah you need to be really smart Um, sometimes it's really boring because you need to save as much as energy as possible so if you think oh I can move up myself always think no 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 every second every power I can save I need to save Um, so um yeah i think that's also you need to be really focused the whole stage for normal people it's a really boring stage but you just need to be focused to don't waste any energy (laughs) Um, and i think in the final it's um also uh yeah you you don't need to have fear um yeah you just uh 
sometimes you need to go to a gap that is quite uh, small, but um, <laughs> then you just need to go. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I suppose you've had a lot of uh, experience racing in quite tight circuits when you were younger growing up in the Netherlands. I mean, obviously a really good Kermis scene um, for the juniors there. That must have been really helpful for now, hey? Yeah, for sure. I think uh, that's really something uh, to be uh, happy with that I that I born in the Netherlands and that I'm in Dutch. I mean, the racing here is crazy. I think as a junior, um, we learned already to go so fast in corners and in a bunch. And yeah, I think that's a, a real big advantage we have as mm. Dutch riders. It's uh, I always compare it with. Um, but it's something that Australians and New Zealanders often talk about because, you know, when we have our big races here, our A-grade fields, for example, or our, even our nationals, you might only have 50 or 60 on the line um, mm-hmm. versus, you know, then the best of that crop, you know, go across to Europe and suddenly yeah. 150 and they're all trying to, you know, and much narrower roads. So yeah, it's, true. It's yeah. Contrast. I wondered, have you, have you had the chance to race with Maeve yet? Yeah, yeah, already quite a lot, yeah. Yeah, cool. Oh, that's good. They'd be a good team uh, in the lead-out. Yeah, yeah. Oh, she's pretty quick as Yeah, well. yeah, it's really exciting, yeah. Mm. Well, um, I wanted to know when you were growing up uh, and as a junior, who were, did you have a role model in cycling that you looked up to? Was there anyone that you looked up to when you were a young junior? Um, yeah, I think for sure to Mariana Fulls, Um I think what she already did in her career, um, yeah, yeah, is quite impressive. Um, she was dominating it uh, for a long time. Um, I think the time changed a bit, although yeah. I think that's also good. But um, yeah, for sure, I always looked on the television two fools, and uh, yeah, I think she was my uh, idol. Yeah, yeah, yeah. She's Voss is awesome. She's one of my favorites too, and she's won so many races. On everything like track, yeah. road, <laughs> mountain bike. I mean, and cyclocross, obviously. Do you ever yeah. race uh, on the track, Charlotte? No, no, no. I did uh, when I was younger, speed skating. Um, so I um, had a lot of years in the ice rink, <laughs> and then I decided to go full for cycling. I already did it both, but uh, more speed skating. And then when I started to study, and I had to choose. Um, I like cycling more, so um, yeah, I went full for cycling. Actually, is speed skating? Um, that's pretty big in in Netherlands, isn't it? Yeah, it's uh, really, really big. <laughs> yeah, like big here, although, yeah, it's bigger than cycling for sure. Wow, yeah. really? Yeah. Jeez. Oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> and now is. Is the speed cycling format similar to track cycling? Like, is there like a scratch race? Is there points or how does um, it? No, it's it is a kind of similar, but um, it's more a distance. So um, it's like the IP from on the track. Oh yeah, where they do like three k or one uh, k. That's it's quite similar. So you are always on your own um, and you have, you ride the same ones on the track um, against someone, but you can't be out of the wind of the rider next to you. So it's all about the time. Mm, wow. Okay. Yeah. Interesting. Um, yeah. What about now? Do you look up to any particular riders while you're a professional yourself? Uh, no, I need to say right now it's, not that I really have an idol, uh, yeah. to be honest. Uh, yeah. Of course, I really like to see the men's races. Um, uh, and I think um, we all really like to see how much uh, Pogacar and Wout van Aert are doing. I mean, this is amazing racing and that's just uh, really exciting to see. But also the sprinters, I think there are coming so many young new sprinters. And yeah, it's... I think that's for me more exciting to watch because it's they are not my rivals, um, <laughs> and I feel in women cycling they're more my rivals. So it will be weird to have an idol in women cycling yeah, awesome. if it's my rival. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. I understand. Uh, in the men's, like you said, the sprinters, there's so many now that can win. Yeah. Um, I really like uh, Arnold Delee. He's exciting. 
Yeah, Kom. yeah, hey. and I also really, uh, it's also really nice to see Sam doing really well uh, mm. from our team, of course. Yes. Yep. And uh, also Olaf Koy, uh, who is still so young but mm. doesn't have a really good good lead out, but he's always there on the right moment and. He's really smart, and that's really nice to see. Yeah, he's got a big future too. I think he, yeah. he, after this will be, um, yeah, interesting to see how long he stays at Lotto, actually, because, yeah, 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 I'm sure many teams will be after him, a lot of Koi. Yeah, it's so exciting. Yeah. yeah. Uh, I was just talking with a couple of, well, about a couple of hours ago, I was talking with um, Elise Shabby about um, Flanders this weekend. I wondered, in the women's race, who do you think will win? Ooh, I think uh, five will win. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> She's yeah. on form, is she? Yeah. She is such a firm with, I have to say, I already, um, on training camp this winter, she was flying. And I, I said to her, I think this season is going to be a special season for you. And she also said it to me, but I, and I can feel it was, she was really speaking the truth, but I was also really speaking the truth to her, like, start to believe in it because I think this season you can really smash it like I mean you did all those years working for others and you're so strong so smart um I think this season is gonna bring you a lot and um yeah how she already did it I mean in the Pana I was not on my normal form but that she wanted there was actually even more beautiful for me than reading myself I think I mean she's such a team player um always there she will always do everything for me and for the rest of the team so i think um it was already the deserved win mm. and sometimes when you just get that first win or that first big breakthrough mm-hmm. always on yeah. the floodgates doesn't it it just it would have yeah i can see it on her she is she tr- she believes also more in it and she is nice I, I can uh, yeah i think five will win <laughs> and i hope <laughs> That's so good. Um, okay, so what about this? If, um, say, for example, when you're uh, not cycling and not sick, <laughs> um, yeah. what, are you, what are you doing in your spare time? What do you like to do outside of cycling? Uh, yeah, I need to say this is quite difficult because normally my whole life is about cycling and all the things you do are like um, thinking <laughs> about cycling in your mind. Yeah. But um, on a really nice rest day in the summer, I really like to go um, boating. Um, yeah. My parents have a nice boat and then, um, yeah, uh, take some friends on the boat and uh, have a nice uh, day or evening with sunset on the boat. That's, uh, hmm. yeah, I really like to do that. And um, Is it like sometimes? That? Skiing, sort of, yeah, like a motorbike or a sailboat. No, just uh, yeah, like a not a sailboat, but uh, with a motor, like a boat with a motor. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's a bit chilling, yeah, speedboat kind of uh, vibes. And um, yeah, I really like to do that. And sometimes I also do uh, water skiing. I don't know if you heard about this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah we heard of water skiing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah yeah cool. i did this from a young age with uh yeah i really like to do that and uh also of course to go to cafes have a nice coffee with friends or shopping also important um <laughs> so yeah i think that's a bit what i really like to do okay when you're doing the water skiing is it like uh like the two skis or are you on the wakeboard or one ski uh, i I do on um, the mono ski, one ski most oh, of the time. One ski. Wow. Yeah. That's yeah. Cool. Yeah, I learned it from my dad uh, when I was younger, and uh, yeah, it's really funny. Yeah. That's super cool. <laughs> okay, so uh, for the rest, I guess while you're trying to get back into um, shape, coming back from uh, COVID, um, has it been hard trying to get back into training? Have you had any after effects, or are you feeling pretty normal now? um no i need to say i'm really happy that i'm healthy now and um we yeah. did it also with medical um really well i think the team uh carried a lot of about me yeah. so uh we didn't over uh, yeah overreach anything uh they really give me the time so i went um after i got sick um and i was feeling better i went to spain to have a good training block there uh, especially endurance because with 
yeah, the sickness I had, you most of the time lose your, um, yeah, really your, um, not not your sprint or your oh, okay. uh, high intensity, but more your endurance. Nice, so yeah. we did a lot of nice endurance block. And then, um, yeah, I, I hope that I was good for the Panne and for Gent Weverum, but yeah. Yeah. I think I uh, knew somewhere that it was wouldn't be good enough. But um I think that the races were good um yeah, good training again and uh, I hope we can build from there on and we have now again a nice week of training and then we will see towards the next goals uh, what it will bring. Mm, okay, okay. So you probably won't line up for Roubaix? Uh yeah, I will do Roubaix, but if oh. I'm in a good shape, um I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. It sometimes takes a couple of couple of uh, times to get back. Did you? Yeah, do... but we have we have a lot of good riders, so um, yeah. I can also help them for sure. Did you do Rubai last year? Just trying to look. You did. Uh, yeah, I did it uh, both times. Yeah. Oh, you did! Wow, she did the wet edition. Yeah, yeah. Oh, I crashed already before the first goal section. So, <laughs> oh, I was. Yeah, it was terrible, but I, I was like, I I want to go to this velodrome. I don't care. And I yeah. picked up so many riders on the road and I, of course, came out of time limit, but I reached the velodrome and oh, it was epic. And then from that moment, I fell in love with this race. I mean, it's something special. Yeah, it is, isn't it? I love the fact, I, even if you make it to the velodrome outside of the time limit, that's still finishing through Bay. That should still be. Yeah. Indeed, yeah. Uh, I love that. No, it's it something that. special this race. Mm. Yeah. Amazing history too. Um, yeah. 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 And I think also if you win there, then uh, you might not be always the strongest, but you also had the most of the luck, I feel. So yeah. then winning is even more special because then everything, yeah, you had everything with you or, or something. It's yeah. I think it's really special to win there. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I've got a question from one of our fans. They say, um, oh, it's about, okay, here we go. So it's about Grand Tours. So um, do you think the format of Grand Tours, or do you think the format of Grand Tours should grow to three weeks? So do you think they should be longer, or do you think where they're at now, that sort of seven to ten day length is is good? Uh, yeah, I think for now is, um, is yeah, it's more than enough, I think. Um of course, a lot of people want to um, compare us to the men's, but I think there is still a physical difference between men's and women's. Mm. So we are also not yeah. um, good enough um, no. to do the same distance as them as we have not this capability. Um, so I think that's the same with three weeks of racing. I think men's uh, recovering faster, um, can train more, so they also yeah, tr can train better to recover better. Um, so I think for us, 10 days is more than enough. Um, we have also a lot of other really nice races and our teams are also not this big. So um, no, I think for now, this is more than enough. Mm, definitely seems like the right amount. And yeah. I was chatting with, I had a similar question for Elise earlier and she mentioned how, and it's pretty noticeable in the last two years, the, the, the quality and the density of the, women's peloton has improved so much you know it's it's a much deeper field now and yeah. yeah once i think when that continues to get even you know the pool of riders who are competing for the win is even bigger now um yeah then maybe they might consider raising it but i kind of like from a from a uh a, you know a watcher's point of view a watcher yeah well yeah it seems like the right the right amount yeah yeah mm. true i think it's yeah yeah i totally agree yeah is um i imagine this year the tour de france be a big goal if you can make, make it yeah for sure yeah what was it like participating in it last year uh yeah it was amazing uh i had not the best experience as i stopped uh in the middle of the race uh yeah. because i did giro and giro and tour where in the end, maybe a bit too much. Um, 
but yeah to start there was already super super exciting and yeah it's something different than all the other races the really? attention we get there is i think what we deserve and um uh, it's a really really big race mm. yeah for sure the biggest. yeah wow that's so cool can't i can't wait i can't wait to for the next round but there's also yeah. so many big races before as well <laughs> yeah true there are a lot of races to go soon oh so good and you know the, the coverage of women's cycling is so much better now being able to watch it on gcn is, is so yeah good, isn't it? i think this tour also indeed helped um a lot with the rest of the year and yeah to give the women's an extra step in the mm. yeah right direction mm. um who do you think will win in the men's race for flanders this weekend Ooh. <laughs> Tough, isn't it it's really hard, but I think Mathieu Van Poel. Yeah. Yeah, he's a yeah, good I, think. I mean, yeah. Um, he has something. If he really wants to win, yeah. most of the times he wins. Yeah. He's, he, I don't know. He's just uh, some someone different, yeah. I feel. So. Oh, that's awesome. Okay, and now I've got two questions for you from me. Um, what is the race that you're looking forward to the most this year? Um, yeah, I think Tour de France then. Yeah, for sure. Okay, yeah. Tour de France. And what about this? What's your favourite post-race or post-training meal? So best of your, what you're looking forward to after a race to eat? Ooh. <laughs> Um, that's a difficult one. Um, yeah, normally we have our recovery, but it's not the nicest thing to nah, ever, forget uh, the recovery uh, thing. We want, you know, yeah, I think yeah, okay. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I'm not a real fan of burgers, I need to say. I think I will say, um, a pizza, a good pizza. Yeah. <laughs> 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 that's pretty good you can't go wrong with the pizza now what's on the pizza um oh people will hate me about this but i love the pizza hawaii i'm sorry the what sorry the pizza hawaii so the with the hawaii. pineapple oh yeah <laughs> yeah sorry italians italians will hate me that's all right but I love it. yeah what so just hawaiian so just the the pineapple and like ham yeah, the ham and the pineapple, yeah. Beautiful. Okay, okay. Yeah, nothing wrong with that. I think that might be an Australian thing too. We love pineapple. Yeah, I think I think it's everywhere normal I expect of Italy. Yes, <laughs> yes, the normal human beings. And everyone that doesn't like this on the podcast, you're free to um, follow the podcast. <laughs> Indeed. <laughs> oh, sweet. Okay, well, um, Charlotte, it was so good to talk to you. I'm a big fan of yours and so are the um, listeners of the podcast, I think. Um, you and Lorena and everyone else coming up into the four, just another exciting package for the women's sport. So um, thanks a lot for your time. Yeah, thanks for having me. I It's also an honour to uh, get invited here. Right? Legends, that is another episode of the Press Room Podcast done and dusted. Charlotte Cool, thank you so much for coming on the pod. Absolute delight to talk to you. Shout out to DSM Lucas for um, helping me set this podcast up. Really, really appreciate it. Shout out to everyone who listened, and I really hope you enjoyed this episode, guys. When you're sitting on your bike listening to this one, doing your training, or you're at work getting it done, earning that cash, or just at home doing a bit of chores and you're listening to this stuff, honestly. I just love hearing uh, and knowing that everyone is enjoying these episodes. I love doing them, and it's very nice to hear the feedback. So, um, yeah, thank you so much for listening. Don't forget to subscribe as well so you get the episode straight away. Hit the little bell on, um, on Spotify. 
And uh, yeah, legends, this is it for a, for a month or two. Um, we'll go back to the drawing board, put some new episodes together, some new plans in place in the middle of the year. I'll be back for a seven gravel race episode in May, um, hopefully with Tiff Cromwell and Nicholas Roach, who are coming over to race the event, and maybe even Blazovic as well, the previous winner. And then we'll do an episode for the Giro. I'll try and see if I can get an audio diarist for the Giro. Um, if not, we might speak to the big man, Jai Hindley, um, for a bit of Giro chat and also maybe a bit of talk about his run to the Tour de France this year and a bit of Bunning Snag chat. But all right, legends, thank you so much for listening and I'll see you in a few weeks, eh? TBR now. Thanks again.